Think you gained a little bit? They say you gain a pound a day on a cruise. Don't feel bad, I've worked here 12 years. I do that zip line, it's a bungee jump. The good thing is you end up in front of Johnny Rockets, it saves you the walk, which is, that's a nice plus, you know. I do that, and then I go up to the Windjammer and have a little hand-washing festival. That poor woman's gotta stand there for the next eight months, 10 hours daily. Hello, sir. Ma'am, please wash your hair. Ma'am, ma'am, please wash your hair. Hello, please wash your hair. That's after 10 seconds. Imagine three months in, some fat person rolls by in their scooter. Hey, you come back here, wash your fucking hair! You think I want to stay here all day? They fly me from Philippines to stay here. Make sure you wash your fucking hair. It's no thank you, madam, for clapping for me. You're very beautiful. You're very beautiful. Where are you from? Brazil? Here, let me make you feel at home. Okay. Thanks. There was a lot of bread at that last supper. Guys, come on in. Welcome. Welcome, everybody. Nice to have you here tonight. Tonight we're talking about anal. I think you'll like it. I think you'll like this lecture. And then Diamonds International right after. We're gonna sell diamonds. Chocolate diamonds. Fitting. Right after. Thank you. You really are. You're wonderful people. You're wonderful people. And that's right. He's coming back out. He's coming back out. He's coming back out. He wants to talk to you. He really wants to talk to you. And we... I have to do it without... without you know, one, both hands need to be free for that impression. Don't they? Yeah. Both. They really do. They really do. They really do. Okay. And... We're gonna play a game. We're gonna play Disney press conference, okay? You're gonna yell out your favorite Disney movies and I'm gonna speak about them like they're real things happening, okay? Yell out your favorite Disney movies. Look at you people, you really are great. What did we say here in the front? Cinderella, let's talk. You've got, look, first of all, I really like her. She's a great woman. She really is. She really is. I'm very fond of her. But there's a big problem. There's a big problem. She's got mice, right? Mice. Mice. She's got mice. Mice. She's got mice. Right? You know what they're doing? They're working illegally. Illegally. Which is a problem. So they're making illegal dresses, which is a big problem. And we're talking about it because China, China, China makes a lot of dresses, but then it's big problems here. What other Disney movies do we have? Aladdin, not a fan, Muslim. Next. <laughs> Snow White, thank you. I'll get to you, hang on, we have plenty of time. I could be playing Red Dead Redemption, but I said, no, let me come here and do this. Let's talk. Snow White, you've got this woman, right? What happened? She ate a poison apple, right? You saw it. And she lied there, right in the woods, unconscious. Unconscious. She couldn't wake up, folks. She couldn't wake up. She couldn't wake up. Right? And all the dwarves were there, right? She was unconscious. And none of them thought to grab her by the pussy. None. None. I love your laugh. I love to laugh. And you sit over here in the corner, darling? Lion King? Of course, for you. Why not? I'm sweating. I recently took a trip to Africa, and the Pride Lands are a beautiful place. They really are. They really are. I'd suggest you go there. Mufasa, what a great leader. We had many meetings, Mufasa and I. Many meetings. We did. We had a lot of meetings. And things turned out really badly there, right? You saw what happened. Scar, right, Scar, he threw Mufasa right off a cliff, folks. Right off, right off a cliff, right off a cliff. Can't make it up, threw him right off a cliff, right off a cliff. 
And, and then the media, did you see what the media did? You saw what they, they're very fake over there. They said Mufasa dies, I'm not making this up, from wildebeest stampede. Right, that's how they spun it. But we all know what really killed him. Mufasa had Obamacare. That's... <laughs> Thank you for the solitary clap that gives me confidence in my career choice. Oh, thank you. Come on in. You're the next contestant on The Price is Right. That was a very Price is Right run that you did. Welcome, darling. Thank you for joining. Taking care of the luggage and all that stuff last night? Ready to go back out tomorrow? Where are you flying to tomorrow? Uh, Dallas. Dallas? Short trip. Look at that. We have another person over there. How exciting. Now, we have some people that have to fly very far. Are there any non-Americans here? Just raise your hands. Just raise your hands and we'll get you the Royal Caribbean applications. One, two, three, four, five, eight, six. Ha, 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 ha. I can't, <laughs> I hate flying so much. Isn't it awful? It's awful. And you hear about these asshole people that bring on their service pets that are fit. They're fake service pets. <laughs> There's one here this week. You see that bitch pushing that dog in that stroller around? I want to kick her ass right overboard. Right, because then you have the other woman, and I'm sure you've seen with the beautiful dog with the thing on it that's actually a service dog, and it's like she's playing by the rule book. But that fucking woman, I need it's my emotional support. This is your support woman right here. <laughs> Fuck out of here with that. People bringing all kinds of shit on airplanes. Peacocks. A woman tried bringing a peacock on an airplane? What is that gonna do? Unless you're starting an NBC show, it ain't gonna do shit, woman. Sorry, my Asian friends, I get very excited. How are things in Asia? Are they good? You ever been over to Asia? You've been to Canada? Yeah, it's nice. And have you ever been over there, though, overseas to Asia? What do you think, nice? You like it? Yeah, I laughed inappropriately and tour guide looked at me like I had four heads. Because of her accent, we were in Shanghai and she was like, tonight we will listen to traditional Chinese folk music. <laughs> How could you not laugh at that? <laughs> and she, she asked, she goes, America, your country is so young, do you also have traditional fuck music? And I said, yes, Barry White. You know what I'm talking about. The black people know what I'm talking about. Is that what you used to get your groove on back in the day? What was that? At age 10? Oh, I got nervous for a second. At age 10, guys getting more action than I am at 37. Is this your woman here, sir? Beautiful woman here. How long y'all been together? 21 years! Silence. Was this cruise like a little anniversary thing or something? You just did it for the heck of it? Family, you know this is the largest boat that's ever been built, right? Did they tell you that? Is that why you booked it? Because it was like, biggest cruise ship ever! Did they tell you how much bigger it is than the last one? 1.2 inches! I'm not kidding you, that's the actual, that's the actual measurement. When they measured this, I was on the front with an erection. So, <laughs> Kalima! Are you laughing at the Indiana Jones reference? Is that what you're laughing at? Look at this little woman here in the front row. How adorable. They should sell plush dolls of you. Are you with this woman, sir? Who is this woman to you? Your wife, really? How joyous is she? Madam, you're adorable. You look. You just look, we should have little babies together. You and I, they look like little Kim Jong-uns running all over the place. They denuclearize our house. That's what they, holy shit! I'm gonna die up here! And the Aquacast is off and Vintage is drinking! We have a beautiful wife, sir. Congratulations. I hope you have many more wonderful years together and I hope that you keep on laughing. 
The key is to laugh and enjoy life. You see people that come on these cruises and they complain about everything. I couldn't work at guest services for three seconds. I heard this guy, this guy went up there, this is what he said. Excuse me, my balcony isn't as large as it appeared when I booked it on the internet. I would have said, why don't you try the other side of your balcony? Thanks and enjoy the fall. Seriously, seriously. I see the dumbest shit on here. I saw these people looking at the wayfinders. That's where if you're lost, you can put in your cabin number and it says, please follow the highlighted route. They did that and when it said, follow the highlighted route, they turned around and looked at the floor and said, I don't see the highlighted route. People like that should be left in Labadee forever. <laughs> Little Labadee Hunger Games action. <sighs> well, this has certainly been fun. I'm glad that I set my alarm for 10 o'clock tonight to come do this. Uh, but you were fabulous all week. This is one of my favorite weeks that we've had on here. Because we weren't in Europe, so we're already way ahead of the game. Uh, I'm going to do some crystal meth now, but you're going to enjoy... It's a weight loss treatment. My doctor recommended it. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. You're gonna. Yeah, thank you. Okay. You're gonna love your next comic tonight. He's one of my favorites. Give it up for Mr. Troy Thurgood. <laughs>
uh, outside of Miami, not too far outside of Miami, a man found an 18-foot python. Right? Anybody read that? It's in the Florida news. He found, see, are you from Florida? Okay. A man found an 18-foot python in his backyard. Yeah. There's pictures of it on the internet. You, you young people, you, got, you girls got your phone on you. You can Google it. 18-foot python in his backyard. The funny part was the 911 call. Only a Floridian would be that relaxed. 911, <laughs> what's your emergency? How you doing? <laughs> hey, look, um, this is the craziest story, right? I'm in my backyard. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. I'm in my backyard and I just put Fluffy in the house. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> See, are you from Florida? Yeah. See how she goes, well, it's a good thing you put the dog in. Fuck the dog. <laughs> See, that's what I mean. Only a Floridian would go, that's good to put the dog in when you find a fucking 18-foot snake. <laughs> Man, you, if I, here's what, if I saw an 18-foot snake in my backyard, first of all, I'd grab my second amendment. And I wouldn't even... Do That's it. Did you get the dog? <laughs> How long have you lived in Florida? Your entire life, so you're comfortable with alligators as well. Yeah, the people at Port Charlotte took me golfing. On the eighth hole lives a 12-foot alligator. They never mentioned it. <laughs> you would think around hole seven, they'd be like, hey man, there's gonna be some Jurassic shit that comes up around here. <laughs> I'm getting ready to tee off. I don't know much about golf. If I enjoy your company, I'll go with you. That's how it is. I don't know much about golf. I watch people. I'm a good mimic. So I just do what they do. Act like I know. So you ever do that where you pretend like you're good at something, but you just watch other people? But it's your turn. I'm like. All of a sudden, the pond moves. And I have never seen an alligator up until this point in real life. And it comes up out of the water. I've only seen alligators on the Discovery Channel. I'm quite comfortable when they're on the Discovery Channel. And he comes up. You notice things about alligators in real life that you don't notice on TV. Like the muscles and the bulge. They got a bulge here. And they're bow-legged. And they're off the ground too. They just be, and they can look at you without turning their head. I threw my clubs in the air, and they were like, "No, uh, come on, come in. he'll let us play through." <laughs> my man coming back. <laughs> this is the last night. You guys gotta go try to talk to the ladies. <laughs> Did you say yeah? How you been doing all week, partner? Fair to Midland? I think I... Ain't that kind of like kind of pregnant? You either did or you didn't. You'll keep it to yourself? Is that why you spoke out in the first fucking play? <laughs> Where you from, man? You from Alabama? Oh, you gonna tell somebody. <laughs> I got family from Alabama. They can't keep a secret for shit. You just get a nice little drink at them, and then all of a sudden it's like, guess what? I'm sleeping with your aunt. <laughs> well, I've been having fun all week. It's always good to watch people on cruise ships. A man came up and talked to me in the elevator. I had my plate of food. I was going back to my room. And he had that, you ever see people with that tick where they go, <laughs> And we did the comedy show, so you gotta be cool, right? If we were on land, I'd be like, oh man, let's go over there. 
But he was trying to tell me, hey, we enjoyed your good show. And we thought both of you was real. So, what are you eating? It's yours. It's almost over. I'm wrapping up. Thank you. It's real close. I got like three more minutes. Where are you guys from? You're from North Carolina? Are you guys all like college age and stuff? Are you in college? You don't talk much, huh? But you guys complain the loudest, boy. I swear to God. I did a cobble. If you ever see me at a college performing, I am on crack and I need the money. They are the hardest place. There is no joke that can clear. You could say any joke. Why did chickens cross the road? I don't eat meat, you son of a bitch. They cross the road because they're oppressed. Or they come up to you after the show, oh my God, you're the African-American comedian. I love African-Americans because African-Americans have totally taken their journey in the United States. Shut up. I'd rather sit at the bar with a racist. He'll leave me alone. Are you guys married here, man? Not together. I mean, just ask him. You right? Why'd you look? No, I'm cross-eyed talking to these people. You don't have to be with your husband not to be married. I'm just saying, are you married? I'm trying to get into a fucking joke. <laughs> I said, are you married? No, what? what? <laughs> she acted like she was getting a DUI or something. <laughs> are you married, ma'am? No? Are you married? How long have you been married? 20 years. That's beautiful. Anywhere other than a cruise ship, that would have got a round of applause. You say 20 years on a cruise ship, people go, newlyweds. <laughs> well, I'm divorced, and I will never do this marriage thing again, but I'll tell you married people this. I really mean this. Stop watching those romantic comedies. They create an illusion of what marriage is supposed to be, and you don't think, since you don't have that, you think you're missing out on something. So your marriage starts to suffer because you think it's missing something when it's not missing anything. It's supposed to be up and down. No, but you watch those romantic comedies. I love you, Sarah. I love you, Charles. I know it's going to sound crazy, but I'd like to kiss you. Be crazy, Charles. Be crazy. Uh, you just saw something like that, didn't you? Just turn on the Hallmark channel and wait. That's not what true love is. I've seen, I live in Florida, I've seen people marry 60 years or longer. You want to hear what true love sounds like? Did you grab the water? You told me to grab the water. Yes, they told you to grab the water when we were over there by the water. Oh. I didn't know you told me to grab it. You never do. You never, you never. Don't make a big deal. The water's right over there. I didn't walk right over there. It's not about the water, goddammit. The point is, you don't listen to me when I talk to you. Roll credits. That's marriage. <laughs> It's almost over, so this is the final joke. And I'm, yeah, it's okay. No, it's 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 cute. No, I don't know. I'm not gonna keep going. It's, I got anything else to do. <laughs> well, you guys get out of here and go have some fun. I've been enjoying this week. I think we've had some fun. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And I watch people drink. See, I don't drink anymore, right? I stopped drinking seven years ago. But there's there's a reason. I just can't do it like you regular people. You guys do shit I never could do, like stop. <laughs> I bet you guys go to liquor stores when they're open. <laughs> I drank till I got that little warm feeling of pee going down my pants. <laughs> you ever try to sneak it in the house when you're drunk? <laughs> but all your keys look alike? 
drunk people open their mouth to focus. <laughs> and there is no, nothing more frightening when you're not trying try not to wake up your wife. And before you get that key in, that door opens. <laughs> that is the most frightening thing to a man. That's why we try to walk past you like we haven't been drinking. Was that, has that happened before? No, uh, yeah. What's that? He knows better? Oh, okay. <laughs> Whatever you say. <laughs> you know what this young girl brought her husband? I did this joke. This is what is funny. This, this couple been married eight months, whatever, right? And I said, I was just talking about how men over 40, sex is better when you get over 40. I believe that. Just because you can sit back and relax. You don't have much to prove. It's true. You are you, and that's it. That's what you bring to the table. All right? For some unknown reason, this girl goes, she was like 24 with her husband, who was actually 24 too. And she goes, my husband is the best. And totally improvising, I just said, well, of course, you're his wife. You're supposed to say that. What wife in here raises her hand and goes, my husband's fifth. <laughs> But it don't matter if you're the best. But it just matter if you love each other. That's what makes it extra special. I know that now. <laughs> when I was a young man, first of all, you walk into bed like you got something to prove. That's why young men bring all that extra ego in there with them. Because we want to show her that we're going to be the best she's ever had. That's why young men talk too much. I bet you never had it like that, right? You like it when I go like that? Is that good? Yeah, you almost there, because this is the close-up. <laughs> I'm in my late 40s, my real late 40s. I'm 51. <laughs> I, don't, I don't ask shit, because this is it. <laughs> That's it. And I could care less if I'm the best you've ever had. I guarantee tonight you're going to get the best I can be. <laughs> and hopefully we both can have a good time and neither one of us catch that cramp. <laughs> avoiding that cramp, <laughs> over 45, avoiding that cramp is just as important as good sex. <laughs> if you're going to get in a position where that cramp pops up, you will not go into that position. <laughs> that position is off the table. Now, I've seen young men get cramps, and it's no big deal. They'll be at the basketball court going, what was that? How many people over 45 got a cramp and go, what was that? You don't do it because you know what the hell it is. It's a cramp, and it's hard, and it hurts. it's like, pow! And whatever you were last doing, that's what you freeze doing, boy. You out there having a cigarette, oh! And that cramp never hits you in the beginning of sex. Where you can save some dignity with your woman, like when you first start kicking, mm -hmm. ooh, baby, baby. It's always at the height when you already look ignorant. Ooh! Now you're walking around your bedroom naked. Turn on the TV, turn on the TV. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think I'm going to end on that, and you have been a fabulous group of people for the week. Take care, safe travels, enjoy your Christmas. Thank you. Thanks for watching, and make sure you hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video. Also, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next videos I will be posting, and leave your questions, comments, and suggestions below.